Hey y'all, this is Amber of Wandering Soup. Um, and we're here today talking about veganism in Southeast Asia while traveling Southeast Asia to be more specific. Um, I being the vegan for the most part um, with a hint of pescatarian. I eat fish sometimes. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of viewers who are vegan and vegetarian. And so I thought that um, I would speak on being not only black, but vegan while traveling. Um, so Kat is also here in the background. And she's asking questions. Mm -hmm. So we're about to get this popping up in here. And if you have other questions after this video, please do comment because we will reply. Exactly. question for you traveling vegan is I guess the, the one that we get the most of has it been hard traveling as a vegan in Southeast Asia it has not been um, surprisingly so I had heard some different things before we got started and I wasn't sure um, but I realized that my perspective as a vegan was coming from an American perspective. So that's why I kind of freaked out because I was like, where am I gonna get my my garden? And where am I gonna get my morning star? Where am I gonna get my this and my that? So I was definitely coming from that kind of perspective um, to some extent. And, um, but I realized when I got here that that's not an issue because vegetables and fruits are a staple all over Southeast Asia. Um, so unless you are a vegetarian who does not like vegetables, um, and I've heard those people exist, if you're one of them, don't be sh don't be shy. Um, but yeah, so but if, unless you just don't like vegetables, you're not gonna have an issue in Southeast Asia. Everywhere we've been, there have been markets on markets on markets with produce um, and fruit, all different kinds of produce stuff I've never seen in my life. So. The, the answer is no, it has not been hard. Cool, so that actually segues into my next question. How did you adapt during your travels? Because you mentioned a lot of processed vegan food. Right, and so yeah, so that's really important um, for me especially because I was at a point in my life before we, in my 40s, I was at a point in my life where I wanted to get away from um, so much soy well, actually, that had been the case for some time. I had been trying to get away from soy. Um, but especially right before we left, um, I was really trying to use, trying to stop using so many processed products. Um, and I won't call out any more brand names, but you know, in America, we can get all kinds of fake this, fake that, fake everything. And I was just, and I have been, I've been a vegan for, I had to count it out, for 30 years, which is, I am really telling my age. So, um, yeah, so I've, I've consumed a lot of those fake kinds of products just because I try them out. A new thing come out, I try it, you know. Um, and I was trying to get away from that, honestly. So when we got here, um, when we started traveling, I was really able to do that because they're just, those things weren't laying around like they are in every store in America. You know, every Kroger, every Harris Teeter, every Publix, whatever has, you know, all kinds of veggie burgers and veggie everything else. So I was able to get away from that, which helped me a lot. Um, and yeah, and really start eating the fruits and vegetables, um, especially the ones that my wife makes for me. Yes. Um, so yeah, I got really, I actually got really lucky. It was really actually like um, a blessing for me health wise and just like, as, where, as far as where I wanted to go next in my vegetarian vegan journey. Um, so Southeast Asia was right in line with that. So speaking of um, adapting, this leads into my next question for you. What new food item have you found that you really, really love that isn't readily available in the U.S.? Something you've never tried before. Um, yeah, so I really like Morning Glory. I'm a fan of Morning Glory. Um, which is also called water spinach, depending on where you are. I've seen it called that too. Um, but just the greens, honestly. Um, the greens here are, I've been able to try different ones just because I don't always know what they are and I just pick them up and 
sometimes we happen upon something that's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. So I would definitely have to say the the greens here. There are some that are the same. They do have kale, and kale is still a favorite of mine. But um, but yeah, I've been able to try um, what is it? Um, um, Kylan Kylan K A I L A N, um, which is not kale. It's something else, but it's really, really good. It's not kale, it's not spinach, it's not bok choy, but it's something in between there. But yeah, cool. definitely a favorite. So what's been the easiest country that you've traveled to and in, in, that you've had no issues at all meeting your dietary needs? I mean, Malaysia was cool because, for a lot of different reasons, because it had like a combination of the fruits and vegetables we could get in the stores um, and plenty of it but then they also had um, they also had some products that I had never seen before and I like they were mushroom based as opposed to soy based um, which I had never really tried honestly that I knew of uh, in my lifetime so I was really interested in trying that and I really liked them um, so uh, and then you know then we had like all this access to like food you know delivery there too which made life really easy um so yeah i would probably say malaysia in that aspect but yeah now you mentioned that you sometimes eat fish but you're primarily veget vegan i wouldn't yeah. even say vegetarian i'd definitely say vegan because i cook her food that she eats um, and I don't use dairy or anything like that. She doesn't consume cheese and, and stuff. So, why fish? Um, yeah, something, um, something told me. So, I, I have children and always when I, during pregnancy, I would crave fish. And so, those were the times in my life where I would actually eat fish sometimes. Um, at first, I was like, no, I can't do it. And then it was, my body was like, yes, you can. We need this right now. So um, salmon is what I would eat sometimes every couple months or whatever. Um, but uh, And then uh, I guess probably like a year before we moved to Southeast Asia, I um, decided that I would do that. Partly because I knew we were traveling um, and I, needed to, I may need to just open up my... Um, open up my horizons a little bit um, because fish sauce is used pretty widely in Southeast Asia. Um, so I kind of wanted to wrap my head around the fact that I may sometimes get vegetables that are cooked with fish sauce or anchovies or anchovy sauce or something on um, that line, shrimp paste. They use a lot of shrimp paste. Um, so I was prepared because I had had salmon every so often in my life. Um, I was prepared to incorporate fish into my diet. So I did decide to do that. Um, and I still don't have it that often. Um, honestly, mostly because we don't cook it very often. Um, but when we cook it in the house, obviously I eat it. Um, and like I said, it's possible that sometimes you'll get vegetables that are cooked in fish sauce. Usually it says it in the menu. Usually it'll say cooked with fish sauce or say, or say sauteed with garlic. Um, so it's not like, it's not like you're gonna get, it's like it's gonna get, you're gonna get snuck with it per se, because normally it says it on the menu. So if you don't want it, if you are completely vegan, you're like no to any kind of seafood, you can still get by um, with those dishes that don't have those things. You just don't choose those and you move on to something else. So that goes into choosing those things. Um, and I think that just based off living with you and, and, and eating out with you and things like that, you have to go to not the mom and pop restaurants if you want to. I mean, certain countries, fish sauce is like standard seasoning. So how would you recommend that they avoid the fish sauce? Would it be go to more Western restaurants, stay away from the mom and pops that don't have the menus outside or... Right. I mean, I, th I definitely think you need, if you are that, if you are conscientious about that, and you don't want fish in your life, you don't want any kind of seafood, any kind of shellfish, even people who are allergic to, um, to those things, then you definitely need to make sure you go somewhere where the menu is in English. <laughs> I mean, that's just, I mean, you just have to, you don't really have a choice. And that's with any country. 
Really, you just need to make sure. And there are places you'll go and they, may, they don't have a menu available in English. That happens. Um, and that's just not where you need to be. We need to be somewhere where you can read it. Because if it's in English, they're usually going to describe the dish um, or at least be able to could tell you what's in the dish. So I would just leave it at that. I'm not even going to say whether it's a local or Western restaurant. I'm just going to say where they have a clear menu in English. If they have that, then you should be good. But that definitely has to be a requirement. Any other tips for vegan travelers? Um, I think you should, I think you should be adventurous, um, more than anything. I mean, um, my view, obviously every, every, every person has their own philosophy regarding what they eat. Um, and every vegan certainly does. Um, so I'm not going to step on anyone else's philosophy, but I certainly think that the way we, the way American, Americans process Food in general is very different from the rest of the world. Um, and so if you apply American standards to food everywhere else you go, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna fall, you're gonna be in error, you're gonna be mistaken at some point for one thing, and you're also gonna miss out on a lot because we just don't have um, other countries just don't do the same kinds of things with their fruits and vegetables specifically that America does. Um, and those are kind of some of the things that I wanted to avoid um, is all the pesticides and the GMOs and, and all that. And you just don't have that issue in every country you go to. So you definitely need to take that into consideration as you move. Um, and yeah, enjoy the food. Like, it's, there's just a lot of healthy food out here, especially outside of America, that you want to take advantage of and you don't want to like be afraid to do that. So, yep. I say enjoy yourself. All right. Well, thank you, Amber, for this legend lesson, rather, in vegan travels in Southeast Asia as a black woman and as a vegan. Anything else you want to say before we call it a day on this vlog? Um, no. Whatever questions y'all have, please do post them in the comments, um, and we will reply to anything specific. Questions about, um, oh, and let me say one more thing. There are a lot, I didn't even mention this. There are a lot of vegetarian restaurants, a lot of vegan restaurants even. Um, you'd be amazed. There is an app called Happy Cow, and you can use that to find the vegan restaurants wherever you are in Southeast Asia. So I haven't even had to use that here in Da Nang, Vietnam, because there are so many vegan restaurants. I haven't even tried all of them yet. Um, but just on the grab, if you type in vegan, as far as food you're looking for, all these restaurants come up. So there's that. Like there's literally restaurants out here. Um, and for those that are harder to find, um, there's Happy Cow, cause that will even list the restaurants that aren't necessarily solely vegan, but that have plenty of vegan dishes. So go for it. But that's it y'all. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and this video. And we appreciate you today. Thank you very much.